self-blame. Self-blame is another mental and emotional state that can keep us restricted and um, keep us tight from the inability to move from. Self-blame is so prominent in sexual trauma when we have accepted that it happened we will then go for a process of self-blame we will may consider the environment we were in was it our fault what we were wearing was it our fault the relationship of trust we may have built with our abuser was it our fault we may have been told that it happened because we were a bad girl or a bad boy. So all these um, conversations, beliefs will whirl around us as to taking on board the responsibility of the trauma. So there's a difference between taking on responsibility of our own healing, of our own choice and desire, to grow from, to move forward from, and taking responsibility for the actual abuse. The abuse was not our fault. Absolutely not at all. It does not matter what you were wearing. It does not matter where you were. It does not matter what the dynamics of the relationship was. It doesn't matter if you bought into trust of that person. The abuse was not our fault. Also, self-blame may come along because we may have experienced a sensation of pleasure and that may create self-blame and even anger within us. Again, that stimulation that pleasure was a natural response to stimulation. It's a natural bodily response. And certainly not because you chose that or because you encouraged that or whatever your belief is. So it's very important to look at what language we are telling ourselves that it was our fault. Where are we taking the blame? Where are we telling ourselves that the trauma was because of something we did or because of something that we believed? So after acceptance, to look at self-blame is a very big step into coming home to our own bodies, our own breath, our own movement.